In this video you will learn how to use such library, which is called Tenstack Router, and this is a type safe React Router. So if you are using React, you for sure used React Router, because there is no possibility to create routes inside React application without additional libraries. And React Router is the most popular library to implement routes inside your application. What problems do we have? It supports TypeScript kind of partially, so you have some typings, but this is not like you have a fully super safe application where you are sure that you can use only routes that you defined and nothing else. This is exactly where we have an alternative, which is called Tenstack Router. As you can see here is the official website tanstack.com and here you can find lots of different libraries which are all written with an extremely high level of quality TypeScript code. Which actually means if we are talking here about router, the main goal is that it is fully covered with TypeScript and it is fully type safe. Which actually means if you define that you have a route home, then you can't really write a route foo anywhere in your application, your TypeScript simply won't allow it. So the main idea is that you are getting everything that you get in normal router, like reading parameters, query parameters, changing your route, routes, nested routes, but additionally you are getting amazing TypeScript support. This is why let's try to set up here an application with Tanstack Router. And our first step here is to install Tanstack React Router. This is why let's jump inside console and run npm install Tanstack Router and also Tanstack Router DevTools. And as you understand, we need DevTools if we want to debug our routes. This is not mandatory, but it is nice to have. After installation, let's look on our project and inside source I have main TS6 and as you can see I didn't even render here a component, we will do it in a second, and here inside routes I create completely empty files where we have router TS6, root, posts, post and home. All these files are completely empty, so let's start from our main TS. The main point is that inside router we would not import our app component like we typically do. We will import here our app router. This is why here we must create it inside source routes and here is router TS6. And what we want to do here, we want to export const our app router, which is just a component. And what we want to return here is our router provider that as you can see we are getting from Tanstack router. And inside we must provide as a parameter our router that we must create and then we close it which actually means the whole app router is just a router provider with the config of our router. Now let's jump back inside our main TS6 and here inside render we want to use app router component. But obviously we must write it with GS6 markup, so like a normal component. Now inside our app router here on the top let's implement our router property. And what is this? This is the call of new router and we're getting this router also from 10 stack. And we must provide inside an object with two fields. First of all, it is route tree. This is a tree of our routes. And secondly, default preload intent. And you for sure are interested what is default preload intent. As you can see here, when we're searching for default preload on Tanstack router, you can find that this is the default type. It is optional and defaults is false. It means that routes won't be preload by default in any way. But I want to use intent, why that? Because in this case routes will be preloaded by default when user hovers over a link or touch start event is detected on a link. And it makes your application really faster because we are preparing our route even before we clicked on it. In this case the whole application feels faster. But as you can see here inside our new router we are missing route tree. So let's create here route tree which is a tree of our routes. And here what we want to do, we need to call our root router, but we didn't really create root router. So let's comment this line for now and jump out. And as you can see here, I have a file root TS6. This is our root, which is similar to the layout inside React Router. So this is what we are rendering outside of the route. For example, a sidebar, header and footer. And what I want to do here, I want to export our root route by calling new root route. 
I'm sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing, it helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. And inside we must provide an object with all configuration. And we are getting here a component where inside we must provide a function, but it must return a GSX markup. If you will use here function brackets, then it won't work because you are not returning your markup. This is why round brackets here is a must. And now we can write our markup inside. First of all, inside div, I want to write that this is a root route. And after this, inside div, I want to create several links. And let's write here link to slash. Here I'm closing this link and we can write home. And then I want to copy paste this slash and it will be on slash post and here the link is post. As you can see it is extremely similar to React Router and this stuff is coming from our React Router. After this div we want to render an outlet and the outlet is a place where your route is going. And after this what we want to render is our 10 stack router dev tools. And this is a special panel which will help us to debug our routes if needed. Which essentially means this is how we are defining our layout or our root route. And now we can use this root route inside our router. So here to create router tree we can use root router. And then we have here add children where inside we are providing an array. As you can see here the array is empty because we didn't define any routes yet. But this is the main idea, we are creating a router tree, we are passing it inside our router and we are rendering it with router provider. This is the default setting of Tanstack router. But it would be really nice to create at least a home page. This is why here we have our home component and we don't create it like a normal component, we create it as a route. So here will be our home route and in order to create it we are using a new route and inside we are providing several things. First of all, we want to provide here a property get parent route. And this is the function which must return for us root route. Because essentially we plan to pack this route inside our layout, so inside our root route. After this, we need to provide a path. This is the path where our component will be rendered. And the last one here is component. We already used that. This is just a function which must return some markup. We can even write it inline, like maybe home page. And essentially this is the bare minimum how every single route is looking like. We have here our component, a path and get parent route. Now we can jump back inside our router and inside our root route add children we can add our home route. And we must import this home route here on the top. So again this is our root route and we are adding different routes which will be children. Let's check if it's working. As you can see in browser, here is how our page looks like. We have here root route. This is our layout. Now here we have links inside this layout. It is just home page and slash post. And this is the route home page, which is rendered correctly. When I'm hitting here on the post, as you can see, we jumped on slash post, but nothing is happening here. Because essentially we didn't create this route at all. But now I want to show you the magic of 10 stack and why exactly it makes sense to pick 10 stack router over React router. I can jump back inside our route and after our router I want to write declare module and here will be 10 stack React router. And now inside we can write an interface, register and provide inside our router that we created and it will be type of router, which actually means for the 10 stack we are providing type of router, so we are providing typings of our router here. And as you can see here all routes are defined inside our router. What benefit does it give for us? Because this is exactly the magic of 10 stack. If we jump back inside our root, you can see here that we are getting an error inside our root router in the link. Why is that? Because here we are getting an error slash post is not assignable to type slash. Why is that? If I remove this stuff and I am just trying to type something, as you can see we have slash, but we can't write here slash foo, because slash foo route does not exist. This is what we never get from React Router, because it doesn't check our links at all. Which actually means we are always sure that we are getting errors if we are using routes which are not defined. 
So let's fix this now and create slash post route. We must jump inside our post component and create a new route. So it will be our post route and we're calling here new route with the object. And again, here is our get parent route, which must return for us a root route. After this, we have our path. It will be slash post and also a component. And in here, I want to return a markup separately because we will write more stuff here later. So our route is there, but we did not register it. We must jump back inside our router and here inside route at children, we can add our posts route. Now, if we are jumping back inside our root, you can see that links to slash post is not ready anymore because here we are getting a nice autocomplete that we can use slash or slash post. And now here, as you can see, we are jumping to slash post and we are getting our h1 post. Additionally, here on the bottom, as you can see, we are getting 10 stack router. This is our dev tools. We can click here and we're getting a full state of our router. We can check where we are, what is happening inside our application and what routes we are using here. As you can see, we have here posts, which is black and here it is green because we are on the posts route. This is extremely nice for debugging purposes. Now I want to show you something else. We want to fetch some data from the API and render them inside post. And actually the easiest approach to render such data and prepare your data for the component is to fetch them before you accept the component itself, which actually means you are specifying what requests must be done for your component to be rendered. This is why let's look on our posts and here we have our component path and get parent child. What I want to implement here on the top is the function fetch posts, which must fetch some data from the API. But in order to fetch post, we must specify a new type for our post. This is why here let's create a type post. And this is just an object with slug field, which is a string, then our title, which is also a string and body is also a string. And now we can create our function fetch post, which must return for us a promise. This is why this function is asynchronous and inside I want to get a response. And in order to fetch our data, I want to use an Axios package and I want to get this data by the URL from HTTPS API real world ion slash API slash articles. And this API is a public API with some articles from the real project. And here we must specify what we're getting back because this is an object with field articles. So we can say that this is a post array. And also we have here our articles count, which is a number. And after this, what we want to do, we want to return response.data because this is exactly where Axios stores JSON. What we can do now with our post router, we can create here a lower depth. And loader means that we must load this data before we access our component. And in our case, fetch post is exactly our loader. This is a promise that we must resolve before we get to our component, which actually means now it will fetch this data. But the question is how we can access this data inside our component. So I want to get here our data by calling post route dot use loader data. And this will return for me data. Let's check this out. Console log data. And let's reload the page. As you can see here, we're getting our data. And this is an object with articles and articles count, which actually means without any additional fetching logic inside our component, we are getting data through this loader for our component. And now here inside our markup, we can easily create one more div and map through this data. So we can write here data articles map and we're getting access to every single post and its index. And we want to render inside a div with our key, which will be an index. And inside we want to render a link for every single post. This is why here let's create a link to. And here we want to write slash post slash dollar post slug. And actually this dollar post slug is a notation of 10 stack. And this is how we can write dynamic parameters. And as you can see here, we directly get an error post slug does not exist because we never registered such route. This is completely fine. We will create it in a second. But here we also want to pass params. And this is an object with post slug where we're providing post dot slug. Let's close our Lee and render inside our post dot title.
So this link is exactly how we can create dynamic links. We are writing here too and we are writing params. And this param post slug, so post.slug, will come to dollar post slug. And we will create this route for a single post in a second. But what I want to show you is that additionally we can create a pending component and an error component. And pending component will be rendered until we don't get data from the API back. And obviously error will be rendered if we have an error from the API. This is why here after our component we can also create pending component. And this is just a function which returns some markup, for example a div with posts loading. And after this we can also create error component which does exactly the same. It will be shown when we have some error. And this is really a nice stuff to have in your router. So the last thing that we want to create is our single post. This is why here I have a post tier 6 and here we want to create a new post route and we are calling here our new route. So first of all we must define here our parent route which will be a function which return root route. Then we have our path. Again it will be slash post slash and here will be dollar post slug. So this is a dynamic parameter. And after this we have our component. And again here I want to return it like this because we need to write some logic here later. So let's for now just write a div with h1 inside and render inside single post. So our post route is ready. Let's jump back inside our router and register it here. This is our post route. Let's check if it's working inside our browser. I'm reloading the page and here we are inside our post and as you can see all links are green. Let's check it inside our post. As you can see this screen is not highlighted anymore by TypeScript so we are safe. This link is implemented. We can click on it and we are being redirected on slash post slash slug and this is a single post of our application. But obviously this is not enough because realistically when we reload the page we also must fetch a single post. This is why here let's jump back inside our post and create here on the top a fetch post function which is an asynchronous function and it get post slug which is our unique string identifier. Now inside we want to make a get call. This is why here is await axios and we're using here get and we know that back we will get a field article which will be our post that we just created. And inside we must provide our string which will be http api real world ion slash api slash articles slash and here will be our variable post slug that we are providing inside fetch post. And now we must return here response dot data dot article because we just want to get back the whole object. Now we can use it inside our loader again. So here is loader but here is a tricky part. We want to read parameters from our loader and provide them inside fetch post function. And here we will provide just parameter params.postslug. As you can see from everywhere we are getting amazing autocomplete. We know what parameters we are providing for our route and it is all strictly typed. So as you can see here inside loader we can get params inside our function. And now here inside component we can use this data. So we can write here that our post is postroute.useLoader data. And then instead of this text we can render here post.title. And as you can see again amazing TypeScript autocomplete. Let's check if it's working. I am reloading the page and we are getting here the whole title. Which actually means that here the API call was done. And we can see that this is a call to API real world IO. As you can see TenStack Router is an amazing type safe solution but if you are still not convinced that you need type safe router and you just want to learn React Router I already made a full video about it so don't forget to check it out.